5 stars le 5 stelle imagination hi everybody welcome i chose to make my first video in english to talk about something unique that only happens in italy many of you already think that italy is unique in many ways but this particular thing is not told too much and this thing is five stars la forza dell'immaginazione yeah as in five star moment one of the two populist anti-establishment parties in italy and this is the first unique thing because only italy can have not just one but two populist anti-establishment parties five star moment a political party caveat i'm not here to judge to discuss political ideas and results or lack thereof i'm not ready to get into politics i just want to share with you why i think the way they plan to do things uh, it's unique in the world not what they do but how they do it i felt the need to share this with you american and international viewers because after so many years there's so little information about the unusual unusual way five star movement addresses politics let's start with what is there the country has well documented problems with corruption and one of the most interesting parties attempting to harness this anger is called five star it started just eight years ago in a very unusual way beppe grillo Comedian through politician. And Five Star's candidate is 31-year-old Luigi Di Maio. And I would argue that 31 is a little young to be the leader of a major European nation. <laughs> the point is, when you see Di Maio in action, he lives up to your worst assumptions of what a 31-year-old candidate for Prime Minister could be. The old parties are a way down with their conflict of interest, the banks. We have to fly high. We have to take this country to fly high. That's why today we're gonna fly. For real. Cool. <laughs> Although, to be honest, that's not really flying, is it? To be accurate, he should have said, have to make Italy pathetically hover 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> funny. Gian Oliver is a word funny. Except this time he didn't mean to be. Anyway, he also explained perfectly the birthday of the Five Star Moment, the V-Day. We call it V-Day in Italy too, it's not translated. Braids fire against sky-high taxes, corrupt politicians, and lazy bureaucrats. That's right. Five Star was started by a comedian who organized demonstrations called Vafanculo Day, which translates to Fuck Off Day, <laughs> which is actually a pretty great idea for a holiday. Apparently, this guy explained even more in detail the meaning of the V-Day. A political party for people who hate political parties. Let the Five Star Movement serve as inspiration. Its motto, Vaffanculo, which according to Google Translate means Go fuck yourself in the ass. Uh, I guess I need to clarify here. The V word was addressed to corrupt politicians. The Five Star Movement has a fixation with corruption. And guys, this is all you can find about Five Star Movement that has some degree of meaningfulness, uh, which is strange for a party that is governing a country. There are a lot of information in Italian, a lot of sources, not always accurate, but that's okay. Plurality of opinion. But in English, very little. If you look it up on YouTube, you only find a few dozens of clips, generally a few seconds clips, and some longer clips are not very informative. They are interviews from British or uh, European news outlet. Full of loaded question and continuous interruption of the answer. News tend to treat five stars as a populist joke. Not true when you think about the other anti-establishment party, La Lega, formerly Lega Nord. The Nationalist, formerly Secessionist Party. Look. Again, they use it to uh, prevent us from going to other countries because, oh, Cal in America, COVID numbers are up. I was supposed to go to Italy at the end of this month. I was supposed to go to Italy, guys. 
and I was supposed to um, I was supposed to be talking with Salvini and all of these great freedom fighters and members of the La Lega party and I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. Why? Because Europe just banned Americans from going to certain countries like Italy. But under the leadership of the one and only Matteo Salvini, the league has gone from being a peripheral political party, a so-called far-right, radical-right party, to becoming now the dominant political force throughout the entire nation, north and south. Now, next, there is the League. It's a far-right party led by Matteo Salvini, who incredibly, like Renzi, also appeared on an Italian game show. Five-star moment. First speculativity. Are the leftist, rightist, centrist? None of the above. Maybe we'll get into that in another video. The main principle that drives their action is the concept that politicians need to be independent and focus on the citizens' well-being. How surprising. Every politician says that. And then, demagogy. But the difference here is five star have a recipe. You're not a loving politician only because you say you are. You need these three characteristics minimum to be classified as a honest politician who deserve to be in the five star team. One. No more than two terms. If a candidate has already covered two terms with whichever party, cannot run with five star movement. That's why seasoned politicians cannot join five stars. The rationale behind this is if you know that in 10 years, max, you'll go back to your life of private citizen, you're gonna do whatever you can to make the real world better because it's the place you're going back. Plus, politicians who've been in politics for decades are known in Italy to have worked to inflate their privileges and give normal people only crumbles, if anything. The main objection is, how does a politician gain experience? If by experience you mean the strategy to exploit the system, you got me. But this is a topic for a whole different video. Second objection, what if somebody really likes to be involved in politics? Well, you don't need to be paid by taxpayers to do that. Write books, do seminars, educate people, and so on. Bottom line, nobody comes to make a career out of politics and no boarding of old politicians. No more than two terms, no career out of institutional politics. Second, lower your salary. I mean, as a politician, lower a politician's salary. Italian member of parliament's salary is estimated to be the highest in Europe. Somebody affirmed that the average Italian representative makes more than, nonetheless, the President of the United States. It's not confirmed, but this is perceived as an undeserved privilege. So, lower your salary. Salary is not decided by one single party or by the individual representative. How do five stars work this around? Until there will be a law to cut politician salary, and in 80 years there was no consensus to do that. How strange. They return half of their salary. They cannot just refuse portion of the check. They collect half of their salary every month and periodically uh, deliver it to some form of charity, typically some form of ethical bank to help small businesses and startups, but it changes over time. Rule number two. Periodically return half of the salary. They call it restitution daily. And this is funny because although Five Star was already very popular, they won the latest national election, the second one they ever ran for, for this exact reason. Not all of their merit though. In fact, their main competitors, uh, the incumbent, incumbent party at the government, tried to call them out. It happened that a small number of Five Star representatives uh, as small as 8 out of 160, didn't respect the internal rule to give uh, their salary back. They were even sanctioned for that. Their competitors um, uh, harshly criticized the five stars for not being uh, able to enforce their own rules. Voters of this competitor party, uh, as well as the general public, heard the heads of the main party say, few of the five stars they don't give back their salary, which sounded to the listener. So, the remaining 100 do give back their money? You're confirming that. 
it was not the classical politic, political promise. It was a boomerang. For those who know about soccer, it was a non-go. In fact, that statement increased the attention toward the Five Star Movement from people who didn't otherwise, otherwise care, to the point that they obtained 50% more votes than the previous election. It passed from 25% to 32%. Thanks to that, they govern the country now. Yeah, because, I mean, you must know uh, that in Italy and in other countries, you don't need the majority to run a country. More precisely, you need a 50% plus one majority, but not necessarily as a single party. Over there, we don't have only two parties or two prevalent parties. Before 1993, uh, we had a lot of historical parties. There were times where the government te uh, team, the cabinet, was composed of members from even five parties. And you're probably thinking at this point, I don't even know who Italy's current Prime Minister is. I assumed it was just a Vespa in a tank top. <laughs> well, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. There, there has been a lot of them. This will actually be Italy's 65th government in just over 70 years. I digress. Around 1993, a big corruption scandal literally crashed almost all, all historical parties. What was left merged into new parties or joined the few remaining parties, creating two major blocks, the centre-left and the pole of the liberties, aka centre-right. You know, until not long ago, saying just right in Italy didn't sound right. The word right tend to inspire the F word, fascism. Um, the voters with the centrist ideas have been split since then between the centre-left and the centre-right. When the Five Star Movement came into the picture, um, with their weird rule, almost 20 years later, it further changed the political scene, sweeping, up the, sweeping out the minor parties, leaving only the main ones. One leftist Democratic Party, one liberalist Forza Italia, and the rightist Lega North. Five stars were so successful at their first attempt, they collected 25% of consensus. They exceeded Berlusconi's Forza Italia debut. In Italy, for a new party who runs for the first time, just 8% is considered a big success. As mentioned, at the following election, uh, five years later, they also reduced the significance of Forza Italia making it a race, a race of three, Democratic Party, La Lega and Five Star Movement. As of now, the pure right-wing Brothers of Italy is allegedly gaining traction, but I digress. The SAP for the good politicians, rule number one, no more than two thirds. Rule number two, reduce politicians' salaries. This leads us to the rule number three. Rule number three, neither public nor corporation fundings to politics. I feel a little bit weird at commenting this, as it seems common sense to me. So, let's spend only a few words. What's wrong with a politician taking money from big lobbies? It's pretty obvious. Less obvious is why public funding existed at all. In my country, public subsidies to polit political organizations were born with a good intention. When the Republic was born, after World War II, there was the fear that only rich people, i.e. capitalists, could afford rallies, travel to meet voters, posters, and all expenses to promote their ideas. But in the last decades, the quote-unquote refunds were perceived exaggerated, huge. It was like parties ran only for, uh, to get a monetary prize, not to govern a country. Plus, in the last two or three decades, internet made promoting ideas much cheaper. Blogs, social networks, video platform. So, public subsidies were no longer perceived as a democratic institution by the common people. In the previous mention, uh, in famous year 1993, public funding was actually abolished by referendum. But lawmakers restated it through a semantic trick, renaming it from public financing to electoral reimbursements. When Five Star Movement entered the Parliament, they made sure all parties reached a consensus to terminate it once and for all. Bottom line, rule number three, crowdfunding only. So, without mentioning political views or political results, 
it seemed to me uh, that the common sense principles that drive five star movement are pretty unique in the world. They're not utopic, they're doable. We can tell how sustainable uh, they are in the long term, uh, but so far, this undoubtedly reshaped the way politics is seen in my country. There's still a long way to go. Uh, I wish this can be exported to all parties and to all countries, no matter if uh, left wing, right wing, moderate. This way, politicians uh, return to be credible and voters can focus on their ideas. Thank you so much for watching and check out the post, Craig. Italy, the country that gave us spaghetti, the Colosseum, and in a roundabout way, the guy who played turtle. Italy, the country that brought us the inspiration for Hitler and Trump. La forza dell'immaginazione!